start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play, I will start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello everyone, welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. We have an exciting program today. This story used to be my absolute favorite story because it's about a little girl who grew up to be something very, very special. And I can't wait to hear this story. Are you ready? Let's start with some singing. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own, like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. He will gather, he will gather, for his kingdom all the pure ones all the bright ones his loved and his own like the stars of the morning his bright crown adorning they shall shine in their beauty bright gems for his crown little children little children who love their are the jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Hello, Grant and 
I recently got to make a 10 day trip to the country of Costa Rica in Central America. We spent two days of that trip in this farmer's orchard just watching for one specific bird. Can you imagine waiting so long to see one bird? At times, I wasn't sure that it was worth it either, but then I saw the bird. It was so pretty. It was one of the most beautiful birds I had ever seen. The bird is called a resplendent quetzal. The feathers on its back and head are bright green, like emeralds in the sunlight. It has a bright red belly and it has tail feathers that are about 30 inches long. It sometimes is referred to as a bird of paradise because it is just so beautiful. Well, do you want to see it? There you go. I took this video of it taking off from my branch. Look at that tail. This is the only bird in the world with the resplendent in its name. Resplendent means magnificently beautiful because of its rich colors. Do you think they gave it a good name? In ancient times, both the Aztecs and the Mayans believed the resplendent quetzal was sacred and they forbade people from killing them. They considered the long tail feathers to be more valuable than gold. The resplendent quetzal lives in cloud forests, which is a rainforest at high elevation. They eat fruit, especially wild avocados. That is why we were waiting for them in that farmer's orchard, because he had a huge wild avocado tree and he knew that sooner or later, that beautiful bird would fly right in for his favorite food. An interesting fact about the Quetzals is that they mate for life, meaning that the mother and father Quetzals stay together and migrate together their whole life. The parents take turns sitting on the eggs during the incubation, and they both help to raise their young. They build their nests in giant cavities in trees. Have you ever seen such a beautiful bird? I'll tell you, God is a master creator, isn't he? He makes some amazing stuff for us to enjoy. This is a bird that I wanted to see for so many years, so when we finally got to see it, I was so excited. It was worth every minute of waiting in that orchard. This makes me think of the story of King Ahasuerus. I don't know how he decided who was the most beautiful, but he finally settled on Esther and made her queen. She must have been really, really pretty, don't you think? But the most beautiful thing about her was her heart. She loved God with all her heart, even more than she loved being queen. She was kind and gentle and yet firm and brave. I wish I could have met her. She's definitely one of my heroes. The Bible says, let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. That's the kind of girl I want to be. Well, everyone, I hope that you can go outside in God's nature and see what beautiful treasures you can find that God has created for us to enjoy. Maybe you will find the most beautiful flower you've ever seen or the highest tree or the brightest bird or the greenest grass. Whatever it is, enjoy God's handiwork. Bye. Bye. It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight is a picture sent to us by the Valdez family. Location, Tennessee. That waterfall is beautiful. Isn't God's nature beautiful? Actually, I think everything about God is beautiful. His nature, his word, his love, his character, beautiful. Thank you, God, for being you and for showering us with an abundance of your love everywhere we look. And thanks, Familia Valdez, for sending this in. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's wonderful nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. And don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it! Did you read this morning's newspaper? What? You didn't? Well, I'll tell you the headline. Two men plot to kill the king. That's right, you heard it from me. Before we read the rest of the article, let's hear a little bit more about the background of what's happened up into this story and what happened to those two men. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, we thank you. We praise you for being the awesome God that you are. Thank you for your servant Esther, who we're going to meet in today's story. And thank you for how you used her to change the whole course of your children's history. Please send your spirit to guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. 
Are you ready? That's right. We're pretending that we're in the city of Shushan, right? And this was in the silver kingdom of Medo-Persia. Do you remember it was the head was Babylon and then the chest and the arms of silver were Medo-Persia. And Shushan is the capital city of Medo-Persia where the king of Persia lived and governed. And um, the people of Israel had been in captivity for 70 years, right? We had had Darius, we had had stories about Daniel, right? And then Cyrus, his nephew came and he actually allowed the Jews to go home. Although many of them, even though God wanted them to go home back to their country, stayed right where they were. And you might ask why, why would they stay? I don't know, maybe they were comfortable, they liked their job, they liked their house. I don't know, I wasn't there. But I do know that many Jews stayed here in the city of Shushan and in the surrounding areas. And we are now in King Ahasuerus' third year. Now, the newspaper has been full of interesting things about King Ahasuerus. And one of the things that caught my eye recently was that he had a 180 day long party. Now, you may have been to a great party before, but have you ever been to a party that lasted for six months? Six months, that's like half of the year. In fact, here in the US, kids go to school for 180 days in the school year. And as a teacher, I might call that a party, but I don't know that everybody would agree. <laughs> um, 180 day long party. Now this party was for all the important people of the kingdom, and it's where King Ahasuerus showed off his great wealth and his beautiful palace and all the great things that he had going for him. And you would think that after the end of 180 days of partying, you would be tired and you want to like take a break and maybe get some work done. I don't know. <laughs> but no, no. King Ahasuerus had another party, a seven day party, and he graciously invited everyone in the city of Shushan to that party. It was at that party that the king sent a message to his queen, Vashti. Now, Vashti means beautiful, and she was just that. She was beautiful and wise, which I admire. I thought that was really cool that she wasn't just beautiful on the outside. She also had wisdom and strength on the inside, which is super duper important, right? Um, God looks at the heart. That's right. Anyway, he sent a message to her and commanded her to come and show off her beauty before all the guys, because she was with the girls having their party, and he wanted her to go before the men. And she said, uh, no, that's not what I'm about. That's right. She said no to the king. That's why I made the headlines, right? <laughs> and you don't just say no to a king without a consequence. So all of his advisors got together and were like, listen, king, <laughs> if your wife will say no to you, what do you think that our wives are going to think they're going to say to us? They're going to say no to us too. Um, which, I mean, if they had bad ideas, it is a good idea to say no, but sometimes you should say yes too. Marriage is about compromise. But they were worried that their wives were going to all of a sudden all just say no to them all the time, apparently. They were worried about a precedent. You know what a precedent is? A precedent is a decision that people look back to to decide how to make new decisions. And so when other kings or other people were um, dealing with problems or trying to solve issues, they might look back to his decision about what he did with Queen Vashti and then make a decision similar to that. In fact, the advisor said, you need to take away her crown. You need to dethrone her for her disrespect to you. So that's what he did. He took away her throne and her crown. And they said the new solution is have a beauty contest. Everybody loves a good contest. They're going to forget about what Vashti did. And they're going to focus on the headlines of all the beautiful people coming into this um, nation, into this capital of this nation, all the beautiful girls coming for you to choose from to be your new queen. And the king was like, okay, we'll do that. So that's what he did. Meet Hadassah. Hadassah was one of the beautiful girls who was chosen to be in the beauty contest. Hadassah means myrtle tree or like a star, and that was her Hebrew name. You see, she was Jewish, but her cousin Mordecai, who had raised her, he was an older cousin, and he had raised her, um, said, oh, let's not tell people that you're a Jew because they were, there weren't as many Jews and they weren't Persian, right? And so they decided to hide the fact that she was a Jew. Well, how did they do that? One of the ways they did that was not talk about it. And another way that they did that was they changed her name to Esther. Esther was a good Medo-Persian name, which meant star, which is a similar meaning to her name Hadassah. And Mordecai told Esther, don't tell anyone that you're a Jew. Now, 
she went to the palace for the contest and Haggai was placed in charge of her. He noticed Esther right away that she was special and he noticed that and he gave her seven maids of her own even though she was just one of the contestants and the best of everything. It was Esther's turn to go before the king. Can you imagine? Oh, I would have been so nervous. <laughs> Esther asked Haggai, what should I wear? What should I do? And he told her his opinion and it showed that he was, she was very teachable. We jump into the story in God's word in Esther 2 verse 17, which says, the king loved Esther more than all the other women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the other women. So he made, so he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So Esther goes from an orphan girl taken care of by her cousin to the queen of the land of Medo-Persia. Wow. And guess what the king did? To celebrate, he threw yet another party called the Feast of Esther and gave out gifts and he was just super excited to have a new queen. Now we come to today's headlines. You know, those two people who were plotting to kill the king? Well, their names were Big Than and Teresh. You see, Mordecai worked by the city gate and he overheard them talking and plotting their plan to get rid of the king. And right away, he sent a message to Esther who warned the king and those men had their consequence. They were hanged. And the event was recorded in the book of the history of the Medo-Persians. And it was recorded that Mordecai had been the one who reported this event. Whew, the king was so thankful that he hadn't been killed, right? But Satan, on the other hand, was unhappy. Things were not going according to his plan. He wanted to get rid of God's people, didn't he? That's kind of been his goal, to mess up God's plan, to hurt God's people since the beginning of time, right? Or at least since the fall. And so he put one of his agents into action. We'll meet him next week. His name is Agent Haman. And you won't want to miss the exciting end of this adventure, this two-part adventure. So tune in next time. And until then, start with Jesus by exploring his word. Hello and welcome to Craft Time. Can you imagine what it would have been like to be Queen Esther and go from an orphan to a queen overnight? It would have been so neat. Now, I thought it'd be fun if we make a little Queen Esther. So I'm going to show you our little queen and we're going to make her today, okay? So first, you're going to take a round little piece of wood and we're going to draw on a face. But first we want to put our little googly eyes on, okay? Now we're going to take our pin and draw on the face. We're going to glue our crown on, take our little golden items here just to make it look more like a crown. Now make sure you have permission from a responsible adult that it's okay to use your scissors, okay? This takes a little bit to dry, so you want to make sure that it gets all dry. Move it onto there. Then what you're going to do is take some yarn. You want to make even pieces, and then you'll just take your scissors like this, and then you're just going to make some snips in the loops, just like so. And then you have your hair. And I've already done this piece for you, but I took a little piece of yarn. Oops, that was sticking to it, wasn't it? And kind of divided it halfway through. And you're going to take that, flip it over, and glue it right on the back. And I'm going to show you on our example here. So that way Queen Esther has hair. But like I said, it takes a little bit to dry. So we're going to let that Queen Esther dry right over here. And I'm going to show you again. So on the back, there's a little piece of yarn that I used to tie the hair. You glue the, the hair on back there and a little strip, strip of hair underneath her crown. All right, well, until next time, I want you to remember to start everything that you do with Jesus. Bye-bye. Hi everyone! Welcome to Question Time. That's right, it's time for me to test if you are listening to today's Bible story. And if you can't remember, feel free to look it up in the Bible, listen to today's story again, or talk with your family about what the answers might be. That's okay, it's an open book quiz. 
You can send your answers to us. We like to get them in our email inbox. Our email address is answers at startingwithjesus.com. That's answers at startingwithjesus.com. Are you ready for the questions? Here they come. Number one, why was Queen Vashti dethroned? Why was Queen Vashti dethroned? Like not queen anymore. Number two, now this one could have lots of different answers that are correct, so listen carefully. Tell me three things that you learned or know about Esther. Tell me three things that you learned today or already knew about Esther. And number three, who uncovered the plot to kill the king? Who uncovered the plot to kill the king? We look forward to hearing from you. Our memory verse this week is taken from 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4. And it says, Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Don't let your beauty be that outward adorning, but let it be the hidden person of the heart. First Peter 3, 3, 4. Do not let your adornment be merely a wood, but the let it be the hidden person of the heart. Do not let your adornment be merely a wood, but the let it be the hidden person of the heart. First piano, three verse three and four. This week's memory verse, First Peter three verse three and four. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, rather let it be hidden person of the heart. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. Do not let your Do not let your beauty be the outward adorning, but let it be the hidden person of the heart. 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4. Hi everybody, this week's memory verses. Do not let your adornments be merely outward, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. Do not let your adornments be merely outward, rather let it be the hidden Person of the heart. First Peter three verse three and four. Do not let your beauty be that outward adorning, but let it be of the hidden person of the heart. First Peter three verse three to four. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath from South Africa. Bye, happy Sabbath. Feliz sábado. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. Bye, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Bye, happy.
Happy Sabbath. Bye. Bye. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Well, we only have one thing for today's experiment. What is it? A rock. <laughs> it does look like a rock, isn't it? It doesn't look very pretty. Kind of looks dirty to me, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Just kind of like a dirty rock. But this is a special rock. This rock is called a geode. That means that there's something special on the inside. Should we go outside and try to break it and see what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Geodes are spherical rocks that contain hollowed cavities lined with crystals. Over time, the air, mud, or tree roots create a hollow cavity or a space within a rock, while the outer edges harden into spherical shape. Then the groundwater begins to flow around and through these rocks. Groundwater naturally picks up a variety of minerals as it makes its way down from the surface. These minerals, including quartz, amethyst, and calcite, among others, dissolve in the groundwater and get deposited inside the developing geode. You can see the beautiful result when you open a geode and reveal the crystals inside. Look how beautiful this is. It is so beautiful. It took us quite a bit to get them mm -hmm. open. But once we did, what did we find? this beautifulness. That's right. Sometimes we get concerned about how we look on the outside to other people. But God said the outward adorning is not what's important. We want to focus on the hidden person of the heart. Like this. That's right. It's what's on the inside that matters. Just like the geode's beauty can be found on the inside, that's where we want to focus on creating our beauty as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you were here. Our story today was about a little girl who became queen, and that is so exciting. But you know what? Our story began with a queen who stood for right and actually ended up not being queen anymore. And you say, well, Miss Ruthie, why did you remind me of that? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. That has to do with our challenge today. Our challenge for you is to stand true to what you believe, even when somebody you trust or, is an, or who is an authority to you wants you to do something you shouldn't do. Now, some of you might find that you're in a situation where you don't know how to stand up and you're afraid and you're scared, then I would challenge you to find somebody who is safe. Somebody who you can, maybe a teacher, maybe a, a good friend, maybe somebody else. Try to find somebody 
who is safe, maybe even having to call the police. Finding a safe person to tell if you're in a situation that you are maybe scared or you don't know what to do. Find a safe person to tell about your situation. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Please be with our friends, our boys and girls who are watching today. I pray that you will be with them. I know that there's little boys and girls right now who are in situations where they don't know what to do. And you love them in those situations. You are with them and you, you want to help them. I pray that you will give them the strength to be able and the ability to be able to get out of those situations to be able to, where possible, say no, and to be able to, where possible, find a safe person to talk to. Lord, we love you. And thank you that you are with us, that you love us even when we're scared, that you love us even when we don't know what to do. And you, you made us wonderfully and beautifully and who you made us to be in your wonderful character and you love that about us. And I pray that you will help each boy and girl to remember that uh, throughout their lives, no matter what their situations, that they are loved by you. That you love them, no matter what's happening. You love them. Just like you loved Esther, just like you loved Daniel and our other stories, and just like you loved Vashti, that you named her by name in the Bible because she stood up for what she believed and be with every one of these boys and girls we love you jesus and we thank you in jesus name amen thanks so much for watching have a blessed week and keep in touch